In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Start off by reading 2 Timothy 4, verses 5 to 8, and then Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. These are the readings for the Sunday before Theophany. Theophany is where we celebrate the full manifestation of God for the first time. All the way through the Old Testament, if you look carefully, you can see that the Holy Trinity is at work all the way through it. But in this particular case, we hear God the Father's voice. We see God the Son in the water. And they experience God the Holy Spirit descending upon God the Son in the form of a dove. And so there we have the manifestation, the uh, showing forth of the Holy Trinity. Something we should indeed celebrate and used to be one of the main celebrations of the year. Much more important than Christmas Day itself. Now, St. Paul talks about those people who are pleased about the coming of Christ. He says that really in verse 8 of chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. But he also says to Timothy something really important. He says, fulfill your ministry as an evangelist. He talks about being an evangelist, then he says, fulfill your ministry. The word ministry there he uses is diakonia, your service, your work, your service as a servant of God. And it's that really that I want briefly to talk about. If we think about the theophany, there are several important characters there. Obviously, though I shouldn't really say about characters, you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But there's somebody else there as well, and that somebody is John the Forerunner and Baptist. And in baptizing the Lord, St. John fulfills his diaconia, his service, his ministry. And then it's complete. He continues to baptize for a while, but he doesn't baptize so long because his journey is complete. What he came to do is now done, and he, like St. Paul, is then beheaded. So, what do we have here? We have somebody who stands there in front of the Lord, preparing the way for the Lord, coming before him into um, the Holy Land, so that people can come to him and come back through the River Jordan and back into the Holy Land and start their whole pilgrimage afresh. And that really is what you could be as well and what the ministers of the church, all of us, whether we're bishops or priests or deacons or readers or subdeacons or whoever you are, lay people most especially. Lay people most especially because they're like a sort of fifth column. If you dress like I dress, you're pretty obvious, and everybody expects you to be saying Christian things. <laughs> That's, they say, is what you're paid to do. So they expect that. But the fifth column, the lay people, those who are baptized into the royal priesthood, go secretly throughout the world. And they are sort of the Lord's crack troops you are that. And so you go ahead of the Lord, like John the Forerunner and Baptist, and you might say, what do people come to see? A reed broken? Something swaying in the wind? It's just me. But it's you plus Christ. And by being an evangelist of Christ, and you don't need to use words, by living the Christian life, by showing people love and tolerance, and not judging others and forgiving others, you will bring them also to Christ. And in that way, you too will fulfill the diakonia that God has placed on you. And, Saint says, and says Saint Paul, you then will also receive a reward. He says so quite clearly. The Lord will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So each of us will get a reward, our just reward, for the work, 
for the diaconia, for the service, for the ministry, for the evangelism that we have done in his name. Because, as it says here, we loved his appearing. God bless you. Pray for me. Amen.